Welcome back to Base Camp, Western North Carolina. Oh, we're out here on a nice brisk January day of about 21 degrees. We just did a presentation at a group meeting in Asheville, North Carolina, on water and obtaining it, keeping it, getting it, off-grid type situation. So I wanted to bring and show you the spring cistern here at Base Camp. This is a cement block, got a cement poured wall. The boys went over and above it. This thing right here dates back to about 1964 or 65 when they put this thing in. And I'm going to show you the cistern here. And then I'm going to take you down and show you the spring house. How we charge things. This is a gravity flow water system. And as you can tell, Mother Nature's been camouflaging it for us. Put a nice big tree over it. Here is a whole pile of locals that don't even know this thing even exists. This past summer, we did get inside that thing. And we cleaned out a bunch of the sediment, which is right here in this pile. I've yet to go over it with a gold pan, see if there's any gold in this thing. I can always hope. It'd be nice to have a nice income. But I uh, kind of doubt it. Um, this thing right here. It's January, it's flowing. Of course, it's been raining and freezing and carrying on. We're flowing about 16 gallons a minute out of this spring. We're going to walk down this creek a little bit more and show you another one that comes off the side. We're actually going to be, when it warms up a little bit, we're actually going to put a collar in that thing nowadays and capture that spring and add to it just for something to do. But being it is about 21 degrees today, we're not really that much enjoyable to get in the water and play. This thing has an inch and a quarter pipe coming out of it that runs in this part of this stream bed that I'm standing in right here. It runs down to the basin. And I'm going to show you the concrete cisterns they put in back then and how I've modified it for today. But like I said, this thing was built in about the mid-60s, according to everybody. Um... And it's still works and functioning today. And we'll take you on down this stream a little bit. Well, we're right here. We're about 100 feet down below that. The spring box right there. And what I wanted to show you is. This seep right here is coming out of that spring box. This is all the overflow. And then this one right here goes up and it forks here and forks here. And I'm pretty sure, looking at the mason jars and everything else laying here in the stream bed, this was an old still site at some time. But as I said, it's 21 degrees out here today. We were down here the other week when it was negative three. And as you can tell, all this water on the ground, there is no stream here. This is all coming out of spring heads all alongside this bank. Um, at 21 degrees, if the water's not froze, it kind of tells you it moves enough that um, there's a pile of water in this thing. And we are going to be tapping off one or two of these springs this year just to make sure we have enough water for myself and Farmer Frank down there, my neighbor, and anybody else who'll need it should anything happen. But uh, we're going to move on down here to the spring house and show you some more. Okay, we're back. We're down now about 150 feet from that spring box. And as you can tell, this right here is that black piece of inch and a quarter pipe that was put in in the 60s or so. Um, that actually supplies water to the cistern. But as you can tell where these two come together right here, and like I said, this is not a stream. This is all spring heads in this uh, valley right here. You can see the water flowing, but one of them I do want to tap is right here to the side, coming out just to the right of this rock. Let me zoom in on it, and look at that water flowing. We estimate that thing about 30 gallons a minute coming out of that thing. Um, so it'll be a good one to have, and like I said, when it warms up, we're going to actually show you putting a seat collar on this thing and capturing it and running it down. And without making you too sick, let me go right down this little thing right here. And we are that close to the concrete cisterns and the water system. So we're going to jump down there and show you a picture of this thing and let you see the pump system. Well, as you can tell, maybe, 
There's the pipe coming up to the cistern. Let me zero in on this little thing right here. And this is how much water. There's at least a dozen springs going up this little valley right here. And this is the beginning of one of the North Fork, part of the North Fork Frank Broad River. This is one of the very beginnings of it. You can see the water flowing out. There's a pile of water coming out and it is all spring water. You know, there is no creek or anything flowing. Like I said, that is the black line. We are about 30 feet below that spring box. You can see the black pipe coming up in there, the HDPE pipe going in. And it goes into this first cistern. Right above the hill on here was the first house. There was an old homestead in there. You can see they had a lid on the top, and that's where they would pump it from. Right here is the, the pipe comes in on this left-hand side. That is the water level inside. And then they do have back then a drain down the bottom. And we do drain these out every year, and we try to keep washing sediment out. And what I'm doing right now is using both of these as sediment catchers. So there's the first one. Once this thing comes up to the overflow, it goes out this pipe here and goes into the second one. And it's the same thing. Let me take you down below that and I can show you that one a little bit better. Okay, this is the bottom system part right there. Let's zoom up here. This is the first one. And if you can tell, right here is that overflow pipe. And it comes down into this system. And here's the overflow pipe going out of it. I've got the insulation pulled down to show you. This is where the line comes out. And we'll take you up and show you how I got this little pump rigged up in this thing. Let's let you see how that works. Here's a picture to get it up to the uphill. We have gravity flow at one place. But this is a recharge pump. The uh, It just sits on top of that cistern right there. Uh, here's the suction line going into the pump. Here's the discharge line coming out. Um... This is no big thing. This right here is one of them $99 uh, Harbor Freight pumps. Um, the secret to them things is as soon as you buy it, go down and buy a $20 pressure switch. Take that Chinese pressure switch off and throw it away. This pump has been here for over eight years. Works all the time. Um, the neat thing is on this end of the property, it just goes from about 15, 20 pound of water pressure that's gravity feed um 250 pounds so if you're in the shower it's like it takes the skin off your back one way or the other um as composed to enough water to live with but it sure is nice to have higher pressure this is a grid powered pump uh we will be showing you some dc booster pumps that you can rig up solar to hook on to it that will lift as high as 163 feet they're 12 volt they do draw 18 amps, they do draw a lot of power, but there is systems out there. And we're going to be bumping on grid power, off-grid power, solar power. Um, it would be nice enough to harness all this spring water to be able to get a pelting wheel um, piston pump to drive it up to the house. That's one thing I would like to do is collect all this water and see if we actually have enough to do that with it.